Each day, tens of thousands of vehicles move between the peninsula and south side on Interstate 664. In a matter of minutes, motorists cross four and a half miles of water separating Suffolk from Newport News. For younger residents or those new to the area, it may be hard to imagine, but in the not too distant past, these waters were an impediment to transportation. But 20 years ago, something happened that would have a far-reaching effect on the way residents travel around Hampton Roads. That something was the opening of the Monitor Merrimack Memorial Bridge Tunnel, the crown jewel of I-664 between Chesapeake and Hampton. But jewels don't come without a cost, and with a price tag of $400 million, the MMMBT was the largest project built to date in Virginia. Since its opening in 1992, the bridge tunnel has had a profound impact on the entire region, but it was hardly an overnight change. In fact, the Monitor Merrimack took seven years to build. The tubes that make up the tunnel were constructed in the Bethlehem Steel Shipyard at Sparrows Point, Maryland, near Baltimore. The steel was cut, bent into circular shells, and most of the interior concrete was poured. Each section of the tunnel measured the length of a football field and weighed 28,000 tons. These tubes, 15 in all, had to be brought down the Chesapeake Bay one at a time. And when I first saw them in the shipyard, they were just big open tunnels there and they were putting in the roadways and uh, the lights and all getting them ready to come down here. And I thought, uh, I don't know how I'm going to tow those things down here with the holes in each end of them. <laughs> but uh, when we got ready to bring them down, they, they welded the plates over each end. It would take Donald Morgan and his colleagues 60 hours to haul the massive tubes about 200 miles down the Chesapeake. Because we had to come down the bay, go outside to Cape Henry, and come back in because they were so deep. They, they had a 35-foot draft. So we had to turn around, which is very hard with that big tow. Since it was so deep in the water, it was very, very heavy. And start back up the bay, and the pilots and the ships coming down the bay was always hollering, well, there goes that tunnel again, it's in the way again. They turned around again. <laughs> Before the tubes could be put in place, the bottom of Hampton Roads had to be dredged and two feet of bedding stone had to be placed and graded, all within 24 hours or the tide would move the stone and the process would have to be repeated. Once the sections were in place, concrete was poured into them, causing them to sink. Land surveys and laser beams were needed to ensure the tubes were in their precise locations. A diver verified the proper alignment of each tube. But they had a concrete truck uh, in it when they brought it down here from uh, Baltimore, I think. They had a big opening in the top of the first tube. Well, on the island, they would bring the concrete trucks in, pour concrete down into that concrete truck, and then he could run into the other and pour the rest of it. You know, it was five different projects. You had the islands, then you had the bridges, then the tube, the slump, and then the vent buildings. Plus you had the roadway on the other side. The, the vent buildings, that was an amazing project, really. Circulating air throughout the 4,800-foot tunnel would require two ventilation buildings, each containing a dozen fans. As they were placed, they were calibrated to such a perfect balance that the blades would coast for at least 12 minutes after power was turned off. But even with the foresight and well thought out plans of the many engineers on this project, workers still encountered problems no one could have envisioned beforehand. It was quite an experience to, to uh, be out there doing a construction job and all of a sudden there's a whale out there beaching itself. We had some guys that were working underneath the bridge that were checking the pilings and they had a little barge and he had a pump on the barge so he went over, he walked over there and he was spraying the whale, you know, because it was hot, a really hot day. Well, he, he unstuck himself, really, and he went out toward the Newport News Bridge, and when he come back, we were all standing on the bridge. And I think the between the ponds was about six to two and a half feet. And when he come through, he kind of hit both sides. 
The bridge was unfazed by the whale that day and has survived everything else Mother Nature has thrown at it in the two decades since. While the typical motorist may be awed by the tunnel, the 3.2 miles of twin trestle are impressive in their own right. The South Trestle is such a, a remarkable ride. It's, I don't know of any bridge in this area or in the, in the East Coast that rides smooth as it does for the length of this. The entire Monitor Merrimack Memorial Bridge Tunnel is a prime example of a good working relationship between the state and private contractors. And VDOT employees are quick to distribute praise. All the contractors we worked with were, were great contractors who wanted a, a good product. I mean, from the vent buildings, the islands, the tunnel sections, the North Viaduct and the South Trestle, all of them were good contractors who wanted a, a, a good product. I mean, I, we couldn't have been any happier with the Trestle Bridge contractors and the approach and ventilation build, building contractors. They were, they were great. They were, I've worked with a lot of contractors over the years, and these had to be some of the best I've ever worked with. I was grateful to be asked to be one of the inspectors on the job. The hard work of the hundreds of state employees and contracted workers culminated on a beautiful April afternoon in 1992 when Governor L. Douglas Wilder threw the switch that announced the Monitor Merrimack Memorial Bridge Tunnel was ready for traffic. At midnight, the barricades were taken down and vehicles that had lined up hours earlier began to drive through the tunnel for the first time. For many who helped build the Monitor Merrimack, the project remains one of the highlights of their career. It stands as a tangible reminder of the hard work and dedication of its builders. Uh, when I started 20 years ago, it was a prime job to have to come to work for VDOT, and to be a part of that project was, was a lot of fun. I appreciated being able to come out here and do this entire job, and I was lucky to, to be able to stay out here about seven years, from the absolute beginning to the, by the year after it was over with. I just I enjoyed the whole thing. For me, it was a great opportunity to start off something new and be a part of something so exciting. Uh, we started uh, in 92 with a great team of management. That was really when the team concept was uh, developed for us, and it was just great being a part of this team. Unfortunately, not everyone who helped construct the Monitor Merrimack Memorial Bridge Tunnel is still around to enjoy it. In the 20 years that have passed since its opening, we have lost a number of employees whose hard work and dedication helped build the MMMBT. It is impossible to list all their names, but we would be remiss not to mention Jerry Morrison, the tunnel project engineer. His personality and his passion for this project endeared him to many who worked with him. Jerry, uh, he loved this job. I'm telling you what's true. And Jerry, he was a speaker. He could he could speak to anybody. I remember he went to, he gave tours. It's a shame that he can't be here now, really, because this would have been his thing. If he was still here, Jerry Morrison would have seen how his labor of love has indelibly changed the region. Though traffic was somewhat below expectations in its early years, now on an average weekend, more than 150,000 vehicles use the MMMBT. When Monitor Merrimack first opened up, it was a tunnel and bridge to nowhere. So eventually, all the arteries that opened up, you saw new homes, people were moving in, new businesses were opening up. When it first opened, you hardly seen any traffic, but today you go out there and it's full load. It's a full load of traffic on the whole system. So it brought quite a relief to the Norfolk, Hampton area. Suffolk boomed once it opened because that opened up all of Suffolk. But yet, it, Suffolk, if you ride down that highway today, is, is wide open. There's plenty of uh, commercial and residential just along the 664 corridor. Well, it opened up the whole south side, really, basically for development. And as you can tell now that all the, the residential areas and the, and the businesses are developed in that area. Now, 20 years after its opening, the Monitor Merrimack Memorial Bridge Tunnel serves more people than ever. In its two decades, the structure has provided a tremendous boost to the region's accessibility, economy, and quality of life. And it's ready to continue serving the people of Hampton Roads for decades to come. <laughs>